Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. I'll go out on a limb here and say that I'm probably sitting across the table from one of the biggest characters in Annapolis, and would you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> We're here with Chef Big Money, also known uh, as the front man of the Big Money Band. To me, more uh, endearly known as the, the pie guy at the Anne Arundel County Farmer's Markets on Saturday morning. And gosh, we first met, you were playing at the um, Annapolis Craft Beer Festival when it existed at the yep. Navy Stadium when Jim Barthold used to run that. Yep, 2012. And, and you were a friend of my oldest son, I believe. Oldest yeah, yeah, name. David. Yeah. And uh, actually, I ended up throughout my life, I've been able to hook up with all sorts of your relatives between David and uh, your, is it your, it's your granddaughter, right? Yes. Yeah, that yes. used to work at Main and Market. She's not in the area anymore. Right. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of your rock and roll in the band. I am a unabashed fan of your pies. What I love about you is that you have zero varnish. I mean, you, you have no fancy storefront, just a plain white truck uh, with potentially you sleeping off a of last night's gig in it if you've got somebody selling pies for you. Yes. Um, that has happened before, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, well, I, I remember I was in the, in the market. I saw you, and then we were walking around, and it was like, oh, where's your dad? Oh, he's sleeping, man. It was, <laughs> it was a late night. I'm just doing you know, Right. So it's funny. But you, know, you are a lifer here in Annapolis, right? I mean, you guys are multi-generation. Um, yes. The last name is Clow. And, you know, you front the big money band. You are also known as Chef Big Money. And... Well, Chef Big Money is more famous than Music Big Money now. Yeah, well, it should be. Well, Music I mean, Big Money's been around longer. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you know, you're not the Rolling Stones, okay? I mean, you can probably bake a hell of a lot longer than you can, That's right. <laughs> you can rock and roll. But where, where did Big Money, the nickname, come from? It's a family nickname. It goes back, I think there's a... I'll be the fourth one. The fourth money. Now it wasn't given to me. I borrowed it from because I didn't really. Uh, Did you borrow it or steal it? I asked permission. <laughs> I had an uncle big money. I had a cousin little money. You know, and I said, hey, you know, can I use uh, can I use your name as a stage name because it's so cool? And he was he was flattered. So I've been I've been uh, money for 30, 35 years. I don't know what is your first name. Lawrence. Lawrence. Okay, I, I I know on Facebook we're Facebook friends. That's L A. Yeah, like, because I, I hate the name Lawrence. I mean, I, I never knew what. It, you know, it's funny when you you hate your names and stuff like that. I mean, okay, I'm John. Real boring kind of a name. My dad was always called Jack, and I didn't particularly care for that. I don't like the Big John, Little John. Yeah. I despise Johnny. You do things, two things really, really well. Well, that I know of, anyhow. I'll let you figure out the rest. But baking and music. And, uh, I mean, you're a bluesman. We've got a mutual friend in uh, Harry McGonagall. Oh, yeah. Um, Flame and Harry up in Pennsylvania. I love Flame. He's, he's great. What came first, the music or the bacon? Because you're great at both of them. Well, the bacon was part of the household. Uh, my father, you know, my mother and father, they raised us on a, a low income. And uh, we made it work by the garden, having a garden and canning and baking and making our own stuff. And So it was always there, and I always loved it. And then uh, I really got into cooking in the 70s. I lived in an ashram for a while, and I was, uh, ended up being the head cook. So that's, uh, I really fell in love with it there. Taught a vegetarian cooking class at Johns Hopkins Free University for a while. Are you a vegetarian? Yeah, I've been a vegetarian since 1976. Wow, before it was cool. Before it was cool, when your parents thought you were crazy and considered locking you up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a vegan. I'm a lacto-vegetarian. I, I right. do dairy products. Okay. Very cool. Well, do you, do you cook other things other than baking? I mean, baking is obviously your passion. I mean, are you, are you a, a chef? Well, I love cooking food? Indian food. Really? So, yeah, I'm really, uh, you know, to me, that's the, that's the palate for vegetarians, Indian food. You got you know, because most of the continent is vegetarian there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, They've been around five thousand years doing it, so they're good at it. Do, yeah, yeah. Do you, you know, prepare Columbus? What was Columbus looking for? 
spices from India and make everything taste great. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Well, I mean, do you cook Indian food at home? Is that your... When I have time. When you do? Okay. Interesting. Well, being at the farmer's market, my buddy's right next door with a beautiful head of cauliflower. Mm-hmm. My other buddy's selling milk, you know. So I get out on Saturday, I gather everything up. I trade pies for produce, and uh, I come home and cook it up. Well, I, t- I tell you, let's, let's talk about the pies a little bit. Sure. And I... Um, you know, I, I love them. Anytime I get a chance to someone recommends a pie, it's like you know, big money, and they're like, "You're a big fan, John. You're a big I, fan." I am. I mean, they'll sit there and say, "Hey, well, what do you think about Mrs. Smith?" Ah, bullshit with Mrs. Smith. <laughs> go to go to go to big money, you know. And uh, you know, and they're they're great. And I mean, I mean, there's something I don't particularly care for, but that's fine. But the thing I think that makes your pie so great is that they aren't Mrs. Smiths or you know Smuckers. I don't know if they make pies or anything like that. But or you know, we had a chain pie place in town that. Uh, was a franchise, and you're not. Uh, you are a guy. I'm sitting here across the table from me, wearing your little Baker hat in the library. You probably got some strange looks when you rolled in the front door, and you know you are the small guy. And you are a is it a what would call a cottage kitchen, a cottage industry, yeah, cottage food business. Okay, I believe that's the technical term. And what what is that? Well, the state of Maryland has done a nice carve out so people can sell at farmers markets and uh, events. You know, sell their their cookies and their pies or whatever they do without having to um, build a fifty thousand dollar kitchen. Sure, sure. Well, that's uh, you know certainly probably would be a great way for somebody to start to yes. get into. Yes, start that there and then see if it's. If I was younger, I would uh, you know I would definitely think about moving to a brick and mortar. But I'm really happy with the market I have and and. Uh, they, yeah, yeah you, there, there's some parameters involved with that. You, you're really restricted on what you can sell, and right. You know, so, you allowed to put weed in it now? Now that I'm sorry, now, are you allowed to put weed in the pies now that now that it's legal? I don't know. I should look into that. <laughs> Infused, they call that, right? That's right. That's right. J- starting starting July first, the big money special pie. Yeah, here's the special infused. <laughs> Well, you know, we can get your pies Saturdays at the Anne Arundel Farmer's Market when they're open. Right. Uh, and they're getting ready to close probably soon. Well, I'm, I'm there from the first weekend in April until Christmas. Okay. The last Saturday before Christmas, which is Christmas Eve this year, I do believe. Oh, wow. And, okay. Uh, and I also have a Sunday place I've just started up a couple months ago. It's uh, right around the corner from my house on a, a lot my cousin owns on North Best Skate Road. Okay, which is the one that comes off like by the stadium for St. Mary's. Well, it, what's North Best Gate Road is where the, uh, Father Newman Catholic Church is and Weems Creek Baptist Church, and there's another church I call Church Lane there, where it's uh, Raul Boulevard and where Best Gate Road and Raul Boulevard meets. Okay. Uh, the Catholic Church is there. So I'm right on that, on that strip. My cousin has a lot there. Can't uh, miss it. It's a big white truck with... Big white truck, and I put wow. signs out and... I thought I'd give it a try. That way I don't have to involve myself with an organized market on Sundays. I can do it or not do it. Right. Right. Well, you've got your Heroes Farmer's Market, too, when they do them. And I think they do them monthly on, like, Tuesdays during yeah. the season or something like that. Right. That, she's she's uh, wonderful. So are you looking at expanding to go to other areas, other no. markets? No. No, I'm not. This is just, this is where you're... Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be 70 years old on my, on my birthday in February. And... Um, you know, my son comes and helps me out a couple of days a week just, you know, to help me out. And uh, I don't really want to increase. It's uh, maintaining an even strain right now. So, There's not, nothing wrong with that. Well, I mean, what, what is the secret in your pies? I mean, I mean, they're, they're fabulous. I mean, the, the flavor and everything else. Um, cherry, apple. I'm not a real big fan of the raspberry. I did try that one time. It just seemed a little too too tart to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of red. My son loves it, but... Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, to each, each their own. But you, you've... Found the secret between a a tasty crust because you do like do sugar crusty, right? Uh, it's not too thick, so it's not like I, I mean, people say like, oh, don't you love like when you're hungover? Don't you love McDonald's for breakfast? I said, well, yeah, I like the McMuffins, but not the uh, McBiscuits or whatever they call them, just because I mean, it, it feels like I'm taking like a hardened jar of paste and eating it. And sometimes you get pies like that, and the the crust is so darn thick, and it's like, right. <laughs> what? Without revealing too many of my secrets. Uh, well, come on, you know, man. You're almost... <laughs> you, know. I, you know, I make the, I make the fillings myself, and I, I try not to make them too sweet. And then the, the pie crust is almost like a cookie crust. It's not your traditional, uh, when you look it up, the recipe. And, you know, great frozen butter and kneaded it. You know, it's, it's 
for them, the pies I'm making is, would take way too long for one thing. But uh, I use a, a cookie crust, like a sugar cookie. So you're basically having a pie, and you, you, you bite into it, and you take your sugar cookie and get some fruit on it. And it's, that's why people love them. And uh, I, after I make, assemble the pie, I coat it with butter and put the raw turbinado sugar on top, which gives it a real distinct flavor. And then it, then, then it bakes and... Yeah, it kind of caramelizes with yeah. the butter and the sugar baking and the fruit's popping out and it's all doing this chemical thing. And uh, it kind of caramelizes, gets hard, and it's got a really nice texture and a real nice flavor to it. Do you do the whole thing? I mean, okay, you're making the, the mixture, which is pretty much a soup. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, you boil, you boil your fruit and you, uh, you make, I call it pie goo. It's cornstarch and sugar and a little bit of lemon and water, and you, you stir it to a cup, and it gets really thick, and you cut that into your boiling fruit, and then you, you got, that's it. Okay, and, and do, you, do you actually make your own crusts and stuff? Yes. Like that? So, you, so you're rolling these out with a rolling pin? Yeah, I do, I do a, uh, well, I have a, uh, I have a cranking, I'm, I'm making signs like people can see me. I have a, uh, a machine that you, you know, rolls it out, crank it out. They, they come electric. I don't have electric ones. So you, right. you know, that way you get your consistency. For thickness, you do by hand. Right, right. Okay, that you, makes sense. You're guessing how thick it is, and it's a lot faster. I can roll out a big a dough sheeter. It's called. You roll it out, and then I can cut out my tops. And I do everything on an assembly line, like like Henry Ford. You know, I make my make my uh, fillings, I make my dough, and then I do assembly. Then I bake. Are you busy year round? I wish. I mean, I mean, you know, obviously, okay, we're going into the holiday season, and I know. I've already ordered my three. And remind me, I've got to go stop by my car. I've got the, got the money for you. Money for the money. Uh, for the <laughs> uh, and, and the reason I'm paying for this in advance is just because I've experienced this on, on Thanksgivings before. And it, it's much easier if you can come in, here's my name, and get them and go as opposed yeah. to... Everyone who orders in person have been paying at the market. Yeah, order at the market for their Thanksgiving. They pay in advance. And people over on text say, well, pay me cash when you get here. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But... So, I mean, you're getting ready for the holidays right now as we're recording this. So what is the best way to order the pie with you? Chefbigmoney.com is the website. It's a Facebook page, but okay. chefbigmoney.com will take you there. And just send me a private message or my phone number is 443-223-2895. You can send me a text. I don't do the phone calls because I like to have a a text message or a Facebook message as a record of what was. Sure. Like. That makes sense. That makes sense. What's your biggest seller? Well, now it's Apple. Is it? Yeah. What's Hands. your biggest I have, I, I introduced two new Apple flavors for the holidays. It's uh, uh, a Apple Caramel Apple and Cran Apple with cranberries and your regular Apple. I'm doing some pumpkin pies, some sweet potato pies. That's all holiday, Christmas. I've never had your, never had your pumpkin pie. I've got Depending one. Depending on when you're listening to this, if you miss Thanksgiving, I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, there, there, there is always Christmas. You are at the, yes. the farmer's market through Christmas. Uh, I would say, you know, go in there and get your order in as soon as possible. Yes. Uh, that way you know exactly how much uh, dough you need to roll. And Yes, contact me as soon as you hear this. And, and everything Stop else. what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I mean... <laughs> You know, I, and I, I love to watch your Facebook page because it'd be like, "Hey, I'm I'm here on North Best Gate Road. I want to sell out." And then, you know, an hour later, sold out. <laughs> you know, I, I try. I, I can go home. Uh, I, and I love to see a small business. And I mean, you are the definition of a small business. You're a micro business. And to be able to look at the farmers market, and, and I love the farmers market because you've got the support of the agriculture agricultural community in Anne Arundel County, and and just the small business aspect of it is just phenomenal but to see you sell out with you know when i every now and then i walk by and i there's like i call it the dregs but there's like just one little individual pie and maybe a loaf of bread or something like that i'm going okay so he had a good saturday so that's good i think of it as it's the beginning of commerce for humankind the market Mm -hmm. they even named the stock market you know the market that comes from a market in a village somewhere 800 years ago where one guy brought bread, another guy bought turnips, let's trade, right? you know, until currency happened, you know. So I'm, we're doing the same thing at that market every week and that people have been doing for thousands of years. Even as far as, hey, I'll trade you a pie for some cauliflower. I mean, trading, bartering, uh, sure. you know, and selling pies. And I make as many as I can and I sell out sometimes earlier than others. I, you know, it's, it's nice to supplement my income with that. Sure. What's your favorite uh, flavor? My favorite is cherry. 
We're you kindred, and me both. Kindred strong. souls. <laughs> kindred souls here, that's for sure. With some uh, nice uh, vanilla ice cream. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know because then I know that any cherry pie from Big Money is not ever going to really suck because that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what he's what he's looking for there. Have you ever thought about getting them into, or I don't even know that you can with a cottage kitchen, but can getting them into any kind of retail shops? Well, yeah, I think that's restricted in many ways with the with the cottage food business, but um, also it's there's not a lot of margin to hold to wholesale. You know, the, the yeah inflation has hit has hit my bakery, well all the bakery because it's flour, butter, sugar, and fruit have all gone practically doubled in price, if not more. So there's not a lot of room to, hey, I can sell this for half price. If you want to wholesale it, then I wouldn't make any money. You know, it's a, it's a tight margin. And big money can't make no money. Right. It's, it's big know, money, can, not no money. <laughs> as long as I'm able to sell everything I make on my own, I don't feel that, you know. Like, like I said at the beginning, if I was 20 years younger, I'd jump all over this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I know like a lo- another local story that got sort of started where you were, but Tessa May, which is a salad dressing company. I think it was like some lax bros from St. Mary's right, or something right. like that. And their mother made it and they bottled it in their basement. And, you know, I think they got it inserted into Whole Foods and then it just sort of took off. And now sure. up in Baltimore with a big old production facility and everything else there. Shipping? No, it's still kind of cost prohibitive. Okay. We, my daughter in Florida bakes gluten-free cakes, so we did an exchange. She shipped me a cake, and I shipped her a pie so we could analyze how it would work out. Anyway, you enjoyed the cake, and she had a Yeah, I enjoyed the long side of cake that didn't survive well, and she enjoyed the pie that was kind of broke open. <laughs> Interesting. And you know, so it also makes it more exclusive. You know, it, it does. You can't get a big money pie everywhere. You can't just get it anywhere. And you got to stop. My daughter was up here about Renfest, so probably the end of September, maybe. Right. And um, she had to stop by and pick up a pick up a pie on her way back down to North Carolina. Anybody can order a pie anytime and come by my home my home bakery and pick it up. Just give me a little notice to get it together for you. It doesn't have to be when I'm out in public. You can uh, order it if you know if you're going to come see me at a show. Hey, bring me an apple pie. You know, I'll sell it to you in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> full, full, full service rock and roll, man. There you yeah. go, for sure. Well, I'll tell you, you know, you are a machine uh, as far as putting them out. And what do you do when you, okay, and I, I do remember that you were squawking and when you had signed up for a farmer's market that because of the heat canceled and you had baked however many pies. Yeah, it, was, it was an unfortunate situation. I, I, I get, I get that. I mean, it's. Uh, I but, love, I love the people who run that market. <laughs> but, <laughs> What do you do when you when you don't sell out, or do you know the business that well? Well, in the beginning, I, you know, I hate to call it waste, but in the beginning, I uh, it's waste because I don't get money back from it. So it's never wasted. I used to take them over. At the beginning, I had a lot left over, and I would take it to Lighthouse and donate to Lighthouse Shelter. But now I really don't. I kind of know how much to bake and. And I, I do Sunday, so if I don't sell it Saturday, I have a Sunday morning. It's most of the times, I have to bake more Saturday night for Sunday now. So I, I really don't have a lot left. And if I do have left, and i got band members and neighbors and family. I put them in a the freezer and take it out and eat it for a family function. Or, How long will they freeze for? Uh, I put it in a Ziploc bag, and they go forever, I would guess. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I've never done that. It's, it's probably just because they don't last too long. They freeze well. Yeah. But, you know, I don't resell yeah, no, they don't. They don't last too well for long for me though. I mean, it's in there. It's like, okay, well, I'll just have a little slice. Well, I mean, unlike if you have donuts, you need six hours, you got to toss them. Mm-hmm. You know, a pie is a pie is good for uh, five days, six days, depending on where you're storing it. You know, it's a, so it holds up well. Well, you branched out too. You don't have just pies. I mean, you've got uh, cinnamon bread. Yeah. Um, you've got rolls and and every, everything else. Yeah. There, right? Yeah, well, when when COVID come along, there was a vendor selling bread at the market who stopped. And it was, I looked around, and when it was COVID, people are avoiding the grocery store and coming to the farmer's market where there's plenty of fresh air, and there's no one selling a loaf of bread. I better get on this. So that's when my uh, honey oat bread started. Seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity, but I, I felt it more of a service, you know, to make bread so people could have bread. And then it's easy to go to rolls and throw some biscuits. It's, it's quick for me to make rolls, biscuits, loaf of bread. And with cinnamon, it's like a monkey bread that I named after me. Okay. Now you named it after your uncle. You stole the, stole the yeah, name yeah. from 
<laughs> Uncle Mumford was his name. No wonder they there's, there's a guy who should have been money. <laughs> That's what he was. That was it. It was Uncle Mumford, and they called him money. That's great. You know, I, I we've been trying to talk for probably years now uh, oh, yeah. on this, and I'm, I'm glad we finally able got to do it because, I mean, I'm, I've been a fan of you in any number of ways for a couple of years, but is your son working with you at the markets? Does he bake? No, he, he comes down one day a week and, and helps out on, on, uh, on bread day. That's today, mm-hmm. getting the breads together, and then... Uh, he comes on Saturday and helps. You gonna uh, slow down and retire anytime soon? Uh, well, it's, I live in Anne Arundel County. We got we have land taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We can't <laughs> afford to do that. I wish I could. So I, you know, I can sell my property and, and, and get a chunk of change and go to Florida. But I love it here. Right. Well, you your, know? your roots are here. My roots are here. Yeah. You know, and I, I love playing shows. I'm gonna keep going out and playing shows as long as people hire me to do them. You know, so if people are dig what I'm what I'm laying down musically, and right. and the vendors and the venue owners hire me, I'll keep going. You know, I'll be like, a, bring my wheelchair in, guys. Give me a microphone. <laughs> pop, um, pop stars retire, blues men go on forever. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, you know, poor Keith Richards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I consider old Keith a blues man. Yeah. Um, where are you where are you playing? That do you got any gigs that we need to know about? Um, down the road, or yes. as, as he pulls out the his first phone. weekend of uh, the first weekend of December, I am at um, Smokehouse down in Annapolis. Yep, I play there pretty regular, like four times a year. I'm looking real quick to. He used to play the Ebb Tide. Rest in peace. Yes, <laughs> yes, I've been. Yeah, I played. I played the Ebb Tide through 15 different owners, haven't I? <laughs> and it, it's the Dark Horse now, and we have a show book there right. for next year also. But. Um, but that's well. You can find the band. The band's on Facebook too, right? Yeah, I think we're December second. We're at the uh, Smokehouse. Okay, very cool. And Bishop or a Big Money Band? Big Money on, Band on named it after me. So yeah, no kidding, no kidding. If you if you like blues, if you like uh, rock and roll, it's it, it's it's a fun show. It's definitely uh, a good show. And you're playing all over the county. I mean, if you take a look, I mean, you're I've played you're all over in, the country. Yeah, at one point or another, I've been doing this since I was. I got my first paying show, uh, I think, in 1967 or when I was like, mm-hmm. just a baby. That was 10 years before I was born, actually. I got my first show. <laughs> <laughs> well, well even, even, even if you don't like the music, come for the, come for the costuming. Come, yeah. come for the outfits. You know, there's a lot of sparkle in, uh, in, in a big money show. Old uh, school. But there is a lot of sparkle in the big money pies as well. And if you can get out to the Anne Arundel Farmer's Market on Reba Road on Saturdays before the end of the year... Uh, and then take a break and come back in in April when you when you jump in there, uh, or give or give them a call again. Facebook Chef Big Money. Will you bake all year round? Yes, I'm going to try to keep the Sunday thing going on North Best Gate, weather permitting. Right, and to see if see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to see Big Money like in a three foot snowstorm out I there. Go buy my pies. <laughs> yeah, I mean if it's above freezing, basically if it's above freezing, I'll try to set up on Sunday. You know, the social media has been great. I get as as many social media sales as I do from the actual church you center there. I had a, um, there was a woman, and you weren't there one Sunday, and she was hemming and hawing, or one Saturday, she was hemming and hawing on it. And I said, look, I'll tell you what, you buy, I told her, I said, you buy, you buy this medium one, here's my card. And I said, I'm, I'm not affiliated with him at all. I said, if you come, if you go home and say that that's not the best damn pie you've eaten, you call me and I'll give you your money back. She says, well, you're going to lose your money because my mom made the best pie. I said, okay, let's accept your mom, okay? I don't want to diss on your mom. <laughs> okay, if this is not the second best pie you've had, you call me back. And she called me back later that day. She says, he's on the money. Pardon the pun, but it was, uh, I, I've never had anybody come back and say, yeah, it was okay. Uh, they, all, they rave about it. I know Rob Tim at r and I mean, he hosted our... Um, Ignite Annapolis, and we gave him a cherry pie as a thing, and you were yes. so gracious to. I call. I think I called you up like on in the morning and said, "Hey, what are the chances of getting a cherry pie by like four today?" And you were like, "I'll do it." <laughs> so it was. I appreciate. That. Um, I'm lucky that they taste so great, and people love the backstory. They love Annapolis is a um, artist, very supportive to artists. Annapolis, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, they love their musicians, they love their artists, and. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful place to live if you're a musician. So people love the backstory that I'm out here hustling pies and uh, singing songs and 
it's always great to do business with a, a local a local business. I mean, you know, you know where it's coming from. It's not shipped in on a truck and uh, you know put on a shelf waiting for somebody to buy it and rotating it out and okay we'll trash these and stuff like that. I mean, you know, when you're when you have extra left over the grocery store, they th- throw them out. Right. When money has any left over, he cries about it and sits there and squawks. <laughs> you know, well it's Which, only it's only me, myself, myself and my son who um, touch the pies, then it's it's given to you. It's not going through so many hands. Chef Big Money, Big Money Pies, uh get one. I'll throw it out there. I'm not gonna give everybody's money back, but try that pie. And if it's not one of the best pies that you've had, and we're going to exempt your mothers and grandmothers out of this one, uh, I'll find uh, I'll find some way to make it up to you. If you if you come to me and you honestly tell me that this pie was not one of the best pies you've had, I will figure a way to make it up to you. It might be a gift card to some place, or it might be uh, something. I'll figure a way. Best but, fruit pies ever. That's true. Any new flavors coming out? Or you well, spend- like I said earlier, about to have uh, three varieties of apple for the holidays. Uh, caramel apple, cranberry apple in our regular, and uh, pumpkin sweet potato for the holidays. And I have uh, blueberry, blackberry, peach, strawberry, rhubarb, raspberry. It's all on the website. You pull the website out, and there's a list a menu of what I have. That's awesome. And they're kind of fun to look at, too, because you always put a little, you know, you put a little dollar sign in there. Or I, try to, the, I sell happiness, John. I na- sell happiness. Whether you're, you're paying me to sing you a song or you're buying one of my pies, you'll be smiling when you make the purchase. Be smiling when you're done eating it, too. That's Better for sure. selling life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, you want to go to Chef Big Money or the Big Money Band and uh, find out where he is. Uh, you will not regret a pie. You will not regret a performance. What, again, was the phone number where you said, okay, we can go to Facebook and go to Chef Big Money. We can get you at the farmer's market and tell you what we want. And how, what was the phone number again? 443-223-289-5. But thanks so much for uh, coming out of your uh, bread day to the library and talking with us a little bit. And I can't wait to dig into the three that I've got ordered for Thanksgiving. Awesome. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.